Hey guys, Xenas3 here, back with another video. Welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 for Complete Beginners. This is episode 2 of my tutorial series, and we have a lot to cover, so I'm going to skip the whole intro and hop straight into the video. Okay, so I intend on uh, covering all of these tabs at the very top and a few of these little th things at the top where uh, like political power and stability uh so let's start with well we won't cover the your political tab yet uh, i probably will do that in that same ep clump that together in an episode where i talk more about um like just finishing up these things but okay so we'll start with decisions uh decisions the shortcut cut key is shift Q um, but uh, this is where you decide on what you want to do uh, basically what you can change this can affect your political ideology your stability war support um, how well you're doing in a war like it can you know give you extra manpower boost uh, so we're gonna cover some of this so as you can see, a lot of this is red. This is how. Um, this is because I can't afford it, obviously. And all of these decisions cost political power. Uh, you may be asking what political power is. Uh, so political power, you can check up here. Uh, it's basically um, how well your leader can uh, control the country. Like, obviously, if you have a high political power, that means you're your uh, country is doing well it, it can uh, produce a lot same with stability um, but if it's low that means your country isn't really uh, your leader isn't very well respected you're gonna have a, a some sort of conflict like a civil war like if we look at, I haven't uh, we can't check Spain's political power but it's political power in 1936 is like point uh, fifty, so it's really low um, and if you know anything about history, you know they had a civil war, so that's why. But this is what political power allows you to do. It gives you bonuses, lets you change your ideology. Um, so, like, let's go through some of these basic ones. So at the top, these are kind of events. These are more events. This is political actions. Um, but certain countries have, yeah, certain... Uh, events like exclusive to, exclusive to them uh i mean if you play as like iran you will not have any of these this uh, events at the top or like cancel the mefo bill anything like that um so that kind of covers this you can also uh uh toggle this on and off so like as you can see up here we have a decision which is cancel mef bill but you can uh, disable that so if you don't want that to pop up uh, but stuff like this you can just click on it and it will start uh, I should also mention a lot of this stuff will like um, tell you how long it sometimes it will tell you how long uh, it will last the effects um, I know improved workers condition is roughly I think it's a hundred days and prom promises of peace are a hundred days as well um, this is just political stuff it's pretty self-explanatory just by scrolling over it and just reading what it does uh, so we can we did the research tab uh, we'll do diplomacy uh, so this is the diplomacy tab I'm already on Iran but uh, this displays every country in the world and their opinion of you um, so we can I'll show you what a if so let's click on Mexico uh, so as you can see, we have a negative opinion of them, and they have a negative opinion of, of us. Uh, you can see why. So the reason we have a negative opinion of them is because uh, different. We, they have a completely different ideology. As you can see, they are non-aligned, and uh, that's the same with us. We don't have the same ideology as them, so they're going to have a bad opinion about us. Um, so we can also, if we let's go click this button at the top uh, bottom to go back to the countries list uh, this also allows you to invite to factions and stuff um, 
and create your own factions with the diplomacy thing. Uh, like, as you can see, let's click on some of these. Uh, this is Manchuko. This is right over in uh, Asia. They have a good opinion of us because we have the same ideology as them. Uh, it will, whenever you scroll over this, this will say, um, say like why they like you or why they dislike you. Like if you, um, if you're at war, then it's going to be really, it's going to be around, uh, 75. Um, but if you're, if they're in a faction with you, expect it to be around like 40, 50. But you don't need to worry about this. We'll probably get, we're going to, we might get into, we'll probably get into this next episode, maybe a bit into the this episode. Uh, so next to bl diplomacy, if you use the R key, you can go to trade. So this is um, how many, re uh, this shows how many resources you have. So I'm going to uh, cover basically it. So uh, on the left we have oil. Uh, this this uh, right here is aluminum. This is rubber. Uh, this is tungsten, this is steel, and this is chromium. Um, so we can, so how we trade basically is uh, you have to give one civilian fact, you have to use one civilian factory to get that uh, chromium. So let's check our construction. We have 32 civilian factories up here. And it also displays this at how many civilian factories you have up here. But as you can see, we've already used nine, so we only have 23 available. Uh, you will, I, I don't remember if you get these back exactly, but I think you do. But anyway, we have 23 available, and if we, let's say, and we can also, I should go over, you can filter by countries that will trade with you. Um, so since we're playing as Germany, we'll trade with the uh, uh, Soviet Union. You probably want to go with the ones that have the uh, highest number of exports so they can train they can uh, send us 191 chromium before they are out uh, but like countries like Norway they can only send us one so like if we if we um, go here we'll only get one uh, one uh, chromium for uh, one civilian factory which is not a very good deal uh, but like if we click on the USSR we'll get eight um, for uh, eight eight uh rubber or eight chromium sorry for one factory which is a way better deal so we can just click send and then we shall we should get um our chromium we just got it uh so we'll also get rubber while we're at it so I don't forget but that covers the trade tab you just um want to keep an eye on these numbers up here also these numbers. We're pretty good on resources right now, so we won't worry about that. We already went over the construction tab, production tab. Okay, now we're going to actually get into the training of divisions. I will probably go into, I will very likely, now that I think of it, make a episode where I talk about the flag and more about these. But this is where you uh, train your armies. So, like, um, so we click train, right, and then... You can set any location on the map. Uh, for some c countries, you can't, or like you can't set them in certain places. Obviously, we can't put in the Rhineland, uh, but we'll just put it. Um, we'll just put it right here. Um, so these are. It, this is basic infantry. Uh, nothing special about that. We can change the uh, priority so of uh, the equipment. So. If we want them to get the newest equipment first, then we can set it to high. If we want them, if we were like, uh, I don't care so much about if they have the best equipment, I just want them to have equipment, you kind of want to set it to low. Uh, I would just keep it at medium for right now. Uh, you have your tank divisions next, and these are obviously just tanks. Uh, you want to put them, yeah, I'll just put them wherever. Uh, we have, these are your kind of motorized divisions. Um, we'll just put them right here. And we'll put, these are our mountain divisions. We'll put them right there. Oop, I accidentally made some. But I should also add, you can click add a unit and this will start. So you'll kind of, 
start uh, training two two uh, armies at the same time. I usually put three just out of habit, so I'll do that. And we have our cavalry division as our last division. So depending on which country you're playing as and uh, what technology you have researched, it'll depend on like what divisions you can. Obviously, if you don't have tanks researched, you can't make tank divisions. Um, but you can also, let's also cover up here and down here on how it works. So as you can see, uh, if we go over to this little box, it will say not enough manpower equipment to train. Uh, this basically shows what you need to train each division. So for this one, we need uh, roughly uh, 2,500 infantry, 86 support equipment, and 34 towed artillery. Uh, this is the same. You can do this for any unit, uh, and it will show you how much. Obviously, di different uh, unit types are going to need uh, different types of materials. We can also set uh, to our armies to only be, like we can set a capacity of how many armies we want trained. So if I want like two, two sets of uh, these armies to be trained, so that'd be six, I believe. Uh, we could just do that, but I usually keep it infinite unless I'm having a manpower short shortage. Um. So let's actually let's also cover up here. I forgot. Uh, this is going to, this is the garrison stuff, so like, uh, let's just do, so garrison is the, pri this is going to set the priority of the equipment that goes to your garrisons, so you can choose low or high, so if you want them to have uh, the best equipment available, then give them high. Same with basically all of these, uh, I don't, I don't think there's anything else to cover on that tab, we can talk about... If we have time, we'll go over the uh, division design designer, though I doubt we will. Probably be better for a separate episode. Uh, so after this tab, we can click on logistics. Uh, logistics, relatively easy if you don't own any DLC. But this shows um, how you are doing, kind of, and how many, much artillery, like how much, how efficient your factories are, basically. Um, so like, um, this artillery, uh, we're producing, what's that, 2.3 units of artillery, uh, we're producing, what, 56.3 guns a day, uh, what's that, 3 point, I think 3 trucks a day, and then you can see the rest, we're also seeing how much it, uh, it is taking out of our resources, so we have, I think, what, you can also check over here. It's I think it's easier to check, but like this is taking nine steel to make. Oop, wrong tab. We can also see down here our fuel prioritization. So like, do we want to spend more fuel on our air, or do we want to spend it more on our navy? It really depends on what you're trying to do. This also shows how much fuel you have at the. Uh, down here, so we have, uh, we will fill our capacity in nearly a year, and I think this is co covers it kind of for the logistics tab. Uh, up here just shows basic stats like your balance and how much is being stored right now. But our next tab is our officer corps. Uh, I think I should cover this probably more in um, in the episode I teach about. Uh, division design and army XP and our just political tab but let's also cover though these top ones so up here this is that political power I was ta uh, talking about uh, you can see how much you gain so we're gaining 1.43 a day uh, you can also see what's influencing or uh, like causing your uh, political power to go down uh, so for Right now, we have since we have Hitler in power, uh, we get an extra 25% boost and extra. Uh, and since our stability is high, we get our stability uh, is also uh, increasing how much political power we get. But like uh, the four-year plan is decreasing uh, the political power by one, so it would be if it wasn't he here, it'd be happening. It, we would be getting 2.43 a day. And the MIFO bill is also 
decreasing it slightly. Uh, next, we're going to check stability. Uh, so stability is um, how how much your people support your government and your re regime. Uh, like, so let's look at, okay, nothing's interesting's happened in France, but like Mexico, we were looking at this earlier. They only have, they only have 27% uh, support. So that means they're not, they're, they're going to produce a lot le less uh, political power. They're not going to produce as much equipment because stability, it really defines uh, how your uh, country kind of runs factory wise as well. Because if you have really low stability, you're going to produce stuff really slowly and have peasant strikes and uh, worker, like just workers going on strike. But if you have it really high, then you're going to get extra um, bonuses. Like, look, uh, see, effects from our current stability. Factory output, we get a 13% bonus. And dockyard output, we get a 13% bonus. And also the ruling pop uh, party also gets a uh bonus just because the stability is high the people support the government um they're gonna support it more obviously uh next to it uh we have war support so war support kind of de depends on um i guess it, it really kind of it this is really important for when you're declaring war on countries because if you have really low war support then you're gonna like it says our since we only have thirty, our mobilization speeds only gonna be is gonna be decreased. Our surrender limit is gonna be higher. We're more likely to surrender, and our daily command power gain is likely is gonna be uh, decreased by thirty eight percent. So you want this high, um, obviously, because if you have it really low, then your troops are more likely to surrender. You're not really gonna produce as much uh, equipment. But yeah, that's basically it for the war support tab. Next, we have manpower. So here we can check basically our whole army. Uh, so we have right now free manpower, one point, uh, t roughly one point two million people. Uh, free manpower is basically how many people can be recruited and just put straight into to training to be uh, become s soldiers. Uh, we can also see down here we have. We have nearly a 400,000 person army. We have 269,060 in the field. And in training, we have roughly 113. Uh, we can also see how many we have in air, navy, and garrisons. So we have roughly uh, 25,000 in each. Uh, we can also see the total manpower of our country, uh, depending on like what our uh, military or script conscription laws are. So we can, in total, we have 1.63 million manpower. So we're going to be able to recruit uh, tons of people, obviously. Um, and yeah, this basically covers what manpower is. Uh, next to this, factories. And uh, just shows how many factories you have. I'm, I think I showed this in the last episode. I'm not sure, but it's pretty it's, uh, self-explanatory. Up at the, here we have fuel. So right now we have um, 350 days worth of fuel, and it's going up. Uh, this is gener fuel is generated by your excess is country your country's excess oil, and uh, it's stored obviously, and it's used for uh, planes, tanks, and uh, navy combat, I believe. But this basically it's pretty. I don't think I need to go into depth very much. You don't need to really worry about this too much, at least in the very beginning, unless you're like using tons of tanks and planes, but not right now. We don't have to worry about this. Uh, this is the uh, logistics tab. This just came out in the new DLC, and it's came a part of the uh, new update. Uh, I think, it, yeah, it was free update. Um... So this basically shows how well our troops are supplied. Since we're not at war at the moment, we don't have to worry about um, our our troops um, getting the supplies they need. But if if it they did need supplies, then um, or if they 
like say for example we got our divisions encircled there they wouldn't have any supplies so it would be it would be basically zero but you want to try and keep this at a hundred uh, next tab over is just our convoys or next little thing over convoys as you can see we have 200 convoys and we've used four for trading uh, and then we'll just go over these real quick uh, these I'll cover more in depth in the uh, division design episode but this is the command power this is uh, how much this is basically the all of these are basically used to upgrade your uh, generals and uh, your planes and tanks or planes tanks and men I think yeah yeah it's used for your division design stuff but command power this is given from in combat uh, army experience also given navy experience this is only gonna happen if you're using your navy if you're naval invading something then you're gonna get it or if you're just patrolling I believe you should get a bit uh, air experience uh, just used if you're using your air force but these can all be used to upgrade your troops your weapons and that's it roughly that's all you can really do with them but I think that covers most of the tabs up here uh, like I said we'll get to the, the political stuff and the division design stuff with this officer corp and we'll get here let me click on visions all this stuff with the division designer in the next episode anyway i would like to thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next one see ya